welcome to another edition of PCI Teaches. I, I'm your host, Anthony Pinto, and today our topic is going to be five reasons to invest in multifamily. It'll be a follow-on uh, uh, presentation on five more reasons to invest in multifamily, but I think these are the five most important for why you as an investor, whether that is active or a passive investor, would want to invest in multifamily. So the number one reason is tax-free cash flow. So a lot of people throw that around, but what does that actually mean? So the tax-free part of that actually comes from the fact that an apartment building and really rental properties in general depreciate over time. Much like a car, your a property depreciates a certain amount each year based off of if it is a commercial property, if it is a residential property, uh, based off of a tax code um, definition of depreciation. So essentially, uh, let's say call it a residential property, a quad. Um, that depreciates over a certain amount of time. In this case, the thing is uh, 27 years. And so you have 1 27th of that property's value depreciates every year that you hold that property. So for an example, for an apartment building, how that can manifest is, is can be pretty stark and is one of the uh, best reasons that, uh, that wealthy individuals and accredited individuals, investors, get into multifamily specifically or commercial real estate. So let's say that you make $100,000 in actual cash flow into your pocket cash flow per year. Now the apartment building actually depreciates $400,000 for that particular year. So on paper, when you go to do your taxes, you're actually $300,000 in the hole, right? So now you look at on paper that you have a $300,000 loss, even though you made $100,000 of cash flow into your pocket. So in terms of the cash flow itself and how that looks and when you actually get taxed on that, it's essentially tax-free because you're at a loss even though you made that $100,000 in your pocket, all right? Great benefit, tax-free cash flow right off the bat, and it is actually cash flow in your pocket. Now, what I mean by that can be, kind of be brought up in the second point here, which is means greater returns. So that is a relative term, and when I mean greater returns, I mean in, in comparison to the stock market. If you have ever invested in mutual funds or stocks, you may be getting a dividend for your investment. Let's call it $50,000. That's, that's a maybe you may be getting a, a dividend. For uh, the vast majority of just stocks and mutual funds, you're basically just reinvesting those, uh, that amount of money that you're getting every month or quarter or year, however the distributions are. With the real estate, that cash flow is coming into your pocket every single month, year, quarter distribution into your pocket, right? There's actual money in your pocket that you're seeing, and it's consistent cash flow that you're seeing every single time. So, for example, you may be seeing uh, three to six percent in the stock market, maybe a year or on average, and maybe even lower than that, you know, every other year or so, right? So, but with real estate, I can get eight to ten percent consistent year over year for the life of that hold, right? That's a huge benefit of real estate is not only is it tax free, but I'm getting better returns on my money. And I would see in the stock market. Now, a lot of people will tell you that, you know, stock market is the best place to be. That's where the, it averages out to be about 8 to 10% over time. And yes, that may be true since the 1930s or the 20s. That may have been true over the 80 to 90 year period. But year over year, it's not going to be like that. And if you're approaching retirement, you really want to have your money in the stock market where you potentially you know, nosedive straight into the ground and you lose all of that money that you put into it? Or would you rather invest in stable uh, returns in the form of real estate? And it's also tax-free. So for example, my company offers eight to 10% right off the bat, starting 8%, 8% and that doesn't include the tax, that tax part of that. That doesn't approve, uh, include any profits on the back end. That's just in your pocket cash flow that you're gonna be getting from the first month or quarter that we have that property. So number three reason is forced appreciation. And what do I mean by that? So when you buy a, a single family home or a smaller multifamily, something that is a, not a commercial property, which a commercial property is anything greater than five units in the residential sense. With those types of properties that are less than that, the property value of that, of that unit multifamily house is totally based on market comparables that are similar to that property. So even though I may put in $100,000 of renovations into this particular quad or my house, the house next door or the house that is a three bedroom down the street from mine, you know, that is, that is similar in build and number of bedrooms and bathrooms to mine is going to directly influence that, the price of my house, right? Whether or not I put in a ton of work or I put in little work, that house is going to affect my price, right? 
Not so with an apartment building and commercial real estate. And of course, appreciating part of that is due to the fact that the apartment building is, is value is based on the income that it produces, right? And it's based on the property itself and the income it produces, right? So let's say that I have a net operating income and I'll go into all these definitions in a later slide. Let's say I, I have an income or a net operating income of $100,000 per year. Doing some fancy math that comes out to be a million dollar valuation, let's call it a, a cap rate of 10%. Now let's say that we keep the same uh, cap rate of 10% and now I put in, uh, let's say $3,000 per unit for a hundred unit property. So I put in $300,000 worth of renovations in this property and now I can appreciate that. Now I can uh, raise the rents of those, of each of those units, so the hundred units, by $200 a month. So now let's, let's do a little bit of math and you know I'm not particularly good uh, off the cup here, but let's call that 24 or let's call that um, 200,000, or let's see, $20,000 a month additional income times 12 is $24,000. So now I have increased my net operating income by $24,000 in additional income for that property. And now that property value at the same cap rate is going to go up by that increment, right? So you're taking into account the fact that the, the things I can directly do, the tangible things I can do to improve that property will make me not only more cash flow, but will increase the appraised value of that property. It's not so with smaller multifamily or single family homes. It's one of the best benefits of multifamily or commercial real estate in general is I can have a direct input and impact on that property making me money. Not so with stock markets or mutual funds where you may be able to buy a, you know, a, couple, uh, you know, a couple stocks worth of that particular uh, property or that particular stock and it may go up over time, but not so with an apartment building where I can directly affect that property value and that cash flow. So the fourth reason is a less relative risk. And what do I mean by that? So again, we're gonna be comparing this to a, a stocks or even other type of commercial real estate or other or real estate in general. So let's go back to 2008 when the uh, stock market and really the global economy kind of hit its downturn and we had a great recession. So during that time, uh, single family homes hit a 4% default rate, which means that 4% or four out of every a uh, homeowner defaulted on their mortgage and they lost their home. It was even higher with uh, new land and uh, construction projects. It was at 15%. With multifamily, the default rate was at 0.4%. And in, in that every four out of every 1,000 individuals that owned an apartment building defaulted on that property. And that's been pretty, that was pretty stable through the whole recession, which, goes to, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. So if some, people can't afford to buy their homes, or live in their homes, so they can't afford their, their mortgages, they have to live somewhere or they're gonna go homeless, right? So the next best option is to rent. So more people are gonna move into apartment buildings than, than buy their homes during recession time, right? So it bolsters not only your numbers and your tenant base, but it also lowers your vacancy rates as well. So it's actually beneficial to an apartment owner to during a recession for that, that particular reason. So there's less relative risk and it is less volatile and more stable asset and compared to other types of real estate. And the last, last reason is that you can invest with a retirement fund. Now, what does that mean? So you may have a 401k, you may have a IRA, Roth IRA, traditional IRA, money tied up in mutual funds. However, your, your retirement fund manifests itself and your retirement uh, investments manifest itself. It can more than likely, more than likely not be able to and reinvest that into real estate itself. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. So most, com most common way is to use a self-directed IRA or SDIRA. So um, essentially what that means is that I can take my fund, let's call let's say, for example, for me, I had about $50,000 in a mutual fund Vanguard uh, Roth IRA. And I took all that money and I put it into a self-directed IRA with a self-directed custodian. And please, I'm not a tax professional, so please ask your, uh, your uh, CPA on how to go about doing this and any of the tax implications on it. So I rolled that money into a self-directed IRA, which means that I could tell my custodian exactly what I wanted to do with that money. So then I took that money and I put it into a promissory note and invested it in real estate. Now, you could do the same thing with apartment buildings. You can take that money, put it into a self-directed IRA, and now invest that with operators, experienced operators into an apartment building and reap the benefits not only of uh, cash flow coming into that account, but it is also tax-free, is building tax-free if it's a Roth IRA in this case. Not a lot of people realize that, and it really goes to show the fact that there's about $4 trillion of uh, worth of money in retirement funds, and the vast majority, close to 97% of that is put into the stock market, whether that's mutual funds, index funds, actual stocks. 
Um, but there are plenty of other means that other investment uh, vehicles that you can use to invest your retirement fund. It doesn't necessarily have to be real estate. It can be oil. It can be uh, gas. It can be commodities. It can be art for all, you know, for whatever you want to invest in. Right. But there are other means that you can use to invest your retirement fund and real estate happens to be the best form in my opinion. So those five reasons to invest in multifamily, for my opinion, I'll give you five more in a later video. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any suggestions for topics, please contact us at one of the means below. i uh, always uh, ready to answer a email on whatever topic you want to talk about. You can also check out our Facebook page and our Instagram as well as a blog uh, that we talk about uh, my journey in real estate. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you next time.